Hi guys, in this course we're going to build a Django and HTMX web application for managing a user's list of contacts. And this is going to be a fairly short course, around about an hour and a half long, but it's going to demonstrate the core functionality of HTMX alongside a Django backend. So let's start by taking a quick look at the application that we're going to build. And we're not focusing too much on the styles here, we are using Tailwind CSS and Daisy UI, so we're going to learn a bit about that throughout the series, but it's not the main focus of the course. Now you can see we have a table here that contains a couple of contacts and we have the ability to search through the contact list. So for example, if I want only the users who have 22 in their name, it's going to perform that search using HTMX and notice that we don't have any page reloads here. The Ajax requests to enable this functionality are all done behind the scenes by HTMX as we're going to see later in the course. We also have the ability to add a new contact using HTMX and again that's going to pop up with this modal. And if we fill in these details with a name and an email address, we can then add that contact and that appears in the table. And again, that's all done smoothly without reloading the page. We can also delete a contact. So for example, if I want to delete John Doe, we can click delete and we get this pop up here and we can confirm or cancel. And if we confirm that, you can see the user is removed from the table. So it's CRUD functionality. We can look through the list of users and search for specific users. We can also add a new contact and we can also delete existing contacts. Now one other thing in this application is that we can also attach a document. When we click add contact, it's going to add that to the database in the back end. And the document is going to be stored on cloud storage using Amazon S3. And that document then appears in the table and we can click that to view the document. This is just a test document, so it doesn't have anything interesting. But this is going to demonstrate later in the course how you can actually upload a file using HTMX and have that stored on cloud storage. And finally, at the end of the course, we're going to deploy the application using the render platform. So this course isn't going to be a long one. We're not going to build anything more complex than this, but it's going to demonstrate the core functionality of HTMX. And we'll see how we can integrate that seamlessly into a Django application. Now, if you're wondering what HTMX is, let's go to the documentation and we're going to look at the introduction here. So HTMX gives you access to Ajax requests, CSS transitions, web sockets, and also server sent events directly in HTML. And it does that by extending the HTML with custom attributes. And these allow you to build modern user interfaces with the simplicity and the power of hypertext. So the X kind of means HTML extended. And if you want to know more about this, you can check out the NetNinja course. It's available here. There should be a link below the video. We're going to focus on building the application in this series. So let's now discuss some benefits to using HTMX compared to, say, using React or Vue.js. Now, one of the main benefits is simplicity. We don't need a separate front-end application. We can just use HTMX alongside our HTML and add these attributes. And because of this, we don't need to create and maintain a separate API that's going to serve that separate front-end. And that's going to allow us to maintain the benefits of back-end frameworks like Django, Laravel, and Ruby on Rails. So this simplicity is key and it avoids the ever-changing landscape of JavaScript and it allows you to focus more on building the logic and functionality of your applications. And this means that authentication, caching, form handling, and so on, these are all simpler and they can make use of utilities that are provided by those backend frameworks like Django and Laravel. And HTMX is also easy to learn, so it's not a big paradigm shift. You don't need to learn a new set of technologies. It works very well with native HTML, hence the name. And one other benefit, if you're building a team, it keeps your tech stack focused. So if you're building an application, let's say using Django, if you're splitting that out into a front-end React application, for example, you're going to need someone who is very good at React if you want that to succeed. But with HTMX, it's much more simple, it's very easy to learn, and there isn't that paradigm shift and learning a whole new set of tools and ways of achieving tasks. So it keeps your tech stack focused, and that's another big benefit. So what concepts are we going to cover in this series? Here are some of the HTMX attributes that we're going to look at. So we're going to look at sending get, post, and delete requests using hxget, hxpost, and hxdelete. And these are going to enable those CRUD operations in the user interface. We also will look at the hx trigger attribute, and that's going to specify what action triggers the HTMX request to the server. And that could be something like clicking a button or submitting a form. We can specify those using hx trigger and hx target specifies where the response content from the server should go. So the server will respond and we want to tell HTMX what to do with that response content. So hx target and hx swap, the next bullet point here, are going to determine what happens. And hx swap is going to tell HTMX how does the response content enter the DOM related to the target. For example, do we want to replace the entire target or do we want to maybe append the new content as a child of the target? 
You can tell HTMX about that using HX swap. We're also going to look at HX indicator. And this determines what should be shown while you're waiting for a response from the server. And HX confirm is for action confirmation. We saw that, for example, when we went to delete a contact. So for potentially destructive actions like deleting things, you want to confirm those actions and HTMX has an attribute for that. We also have HX on, which is a small attribute for DOM scripting and reacting to events. HX encoding will allow you to switch the request encoding. And that's useful when you're uploading files, as we'll see later in the course. And finally, you can add HTTP headers using the HX headers attribute. We're going to look at that briefly in this course as well. And there are other attributes, but these are the core attributes that we're going to look at. And they are the most important ones for adding nice interactive functionality to your web apps. And it's going to help us achieve the look and feel of those single page applications, but without the complexity. And one last thing for this introduction. There is a GitHub repository that contains some starter code for this project and the code for each video can be found on these branches. So if you want to get the code for a particular video, you can check out that branch and pull the code down to your local machine. So there will be a link to this GitHub repository in the description of the video. And with that introduction out of the way, we're going to move on in the next video and we're going to get started with setting up a Django application alongside HTMX and Tailwind CSS.